Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Eric Parker with One Number Tableau Experts, and in this week's video, we're going to cover why aggregations are important in Tableau calculations. Okay, so right off the bat, let's just start by defining aggregations. So an aggregation is a function which allows you to take numerous rows of data and then consolidate them into a single output or a single number. So you're probably familiar with these already, whether it's from Tableau or Excel or some other tool that you use. So things like sum, average, min, max, count distinct, those are all part of this larger aggregation family that allow you to consolidate numerous rows of data into a single value, okay? So you might think, well, why should I care? Why would I want to do this in Tableau calculations? So let me give you three use cases uh, where aggregations will probably be important, um, and then we'll get to walk through a couple examples together. So I would say, you know, if you're looking for like, what are those key times, um, those key words, vocabulary that I should look out for when I need to think about using aggregations and calculations, okay? So I would say those three key use cases that come to mind is if you're ever calculating a ratio, like what is my profit ratio? What is my ratio of people to managers? What is my ratio? Whatever, right? So ratios, um, if you're ever calculating just any form of percentage, I would say you wanna keep your eye out. And then any time that you're doing time period comparisons. And when I say a time period comparison, I mean something like this month versus last month, this year versus last year, okay? Um, so we'll get to walk through those. All right, so I'm gonna show you a completely fake data set that I've made for our example here today. Um, and this is some runs to the grocery store that I've done, right? So the items are actually things I would typically get, uh, but this is definitely not representative of the actual prices. Um, probably by the time you're watching this, the prices all doubled again, so whatever. Uh, but in, in this case, so we're looking at, okay, here's an item, here's what it originally cost, and then here's how much it was discounted. So in this case, I'm going to Waysafe Groceries, not a real chain, but kind of sounds real. Uh, and so a lot of their, uh, you know, their methodology is to try and tell us we got a discount. And so what, what I want to cover here is um, how would we calculate a discount percentage at an item level, at a receipt level, you know, across all of our orders. And uh, what we want to look out for is to make sure that we actually get the, you know, the right percentage. Like, oh, I got 10% off on my grocery bill today, not I got 2,000% off or, you know, some other weird number. Okay. So we are going to kick this off in Tableau and then we'll bounce back here to Excel. All right, so I wanna know what was my discount percentage by order. So I'm just gonna use my receipt ID and throw that on my row shelf. And then I've got my list price and I've got my discounted dollar amount, okay? So first up, I'm going to create a calculated field. So I hit my drop down here on my data pane, create calculated field. And I'm gonna call this discount percentage. Full disclosure, I'm gonna write this incorrectly the first time um, so we can discuss this. So if I wanted to know what percentage uh, off I got, I would want to take my discounted amount divided by the list price, right? So if, if it was $40 and I got 4% off, that would be a 10% discount, okay? So simple as that so far. I'm gonna say okay. And I'm just gonna change the number format to a percentage so it looks nice. And let's throw this bad boy on our column shelf and see how good of a deal we're getting at Waysafe these days. Show my labels. And I don't know about that, right? Like that seems kind of unrealistic. So I got 146% off, 238% off. So let's make sure it's not a data issue, right? So I'm gonna grab my discount field, throw that on tooltip. I'm gonna grab my list price. I'm gonna throw that on tooltip and let's see. So ignore the crummy formatting, but in this tooltip, I see that the discount is $11 total, got $11 off, and my list price was $76. So uh, I'm not a genius, but I think that that 146% is too high, right? I mean, imagine coming back from the grocery store and like telling your partner or your kids or your roommate, like, hey, guess what? I got 150% off at the grocery store today on my bill. And they'd be like, do you, do you know how math works because did they did they pay you to take groceries away like what are you talking about here right so okay so we know that number is probably wrong so so what's happening well let's actually flip back to excel to go through this 
right? So um, imagine the way we just calculated discount percentage was something like this. We just said, okay, well, it's just as simple as take the discount and divide that by the list price. So we're doing a row level calculation, meaning calculate the discount percentage one item at a time. So we run that all the way down our sheet and we see that, oh, bully sticks, you know, my dog will be happy. Those were 10% off. My sun chips were 25% off. No dice with the vegan dressing. That was zero. Okay. Um, but then once you've calculated the data at a row level like this, how would I calculate the data for the entire receipt, right? So in the world of Excel, maybe you're doing something like a pivot table. Um, uh, but you know, so the, the options here would be, okay, what if I ask for the sum of my discount percentage? Okay, so that's probably not gonna be very nice, right? The sum of all of these numbers from our September outing, ooh, 1.46. That is the same thing that we saw here. This is the sum of the, the row level calculated discount percentages. Interesting. Okay, well, what about an average? Would that be better? Well, I guess it de probably depends on how you define better. Would it be closer to the truth? Yeah, it's, it says 20% or 21%. Um, is it right? You know, are you getting a passing grade in your, uh, in your middle school math test? No, you're not, because that's not the right number either. So how would you do this? Well, uh, again, in Excel, you might use a pivot table or maybe some sort of aggregated formula. So I would say, give me the sum of the entire output of my discount, and then divide that by the sum of all of my list prices for this record. And then lo and behold, doing it that way, getting the sum of one column, dividing that by the sum of another column, now I'm hovering around 14%. Is that accurate? Let's pull up our calculator. So I had to go through a couple of shoots of this video, so I have these numbers memorized now. So if I took my $11 I got off on the original $76 that it would have cost if there were no discounts, bingo, right there is, that's our 14% right here. So we flip back to Tableau. So how do we do that, right? So again, 446%, that's not right. Try and change the aggregation, 21%. It's closer to the truth, but still not right. So we need to edit our discount percentage calculation. So instead of doing a row level calculation like this, where we're calculating every row at a time, and then we have to aggregate those numbers afterwards, we want to aggregate before the division occurs. So I would say, give me the sum of my discounted dollars divided by the sum of my list price, okay? So this is what Tableau calls an aggregated calculation, right? So then it, this will truly be 11 divided by 76. And if you're kind of scratching your head, like why would this make a difference, you know, if we did it row level first and then summed it or averaged it um, versus, you know, summing one column, dividing that by the sum of the other column, and the biggest thing is just that every item is not the same, right? Bully sticks are $40, but sun chips are $4. So you can't really just average them and treat them all as equals because they're not equals. We need something that's kind of more akin to a weighted average. Okay, so when I first do this, Tableau is gonna be a little bit peeved at me um, because right now we're applying an average aggregation and Tableau uh, will only apply aggregations in pills like this to a field that's not aggregated in the formula already. So watch this, I hit okay and Tableau's like, how dare you, right? My interpretation. Um, so you look at that and it says, you know, this can't be applied to a user defined aggregate. So, if, but discount doesn't have an error next to it, discount percentage in the data pane. So if I just drag this out here again, notice the little AGG, meaning a user defined aggregate in the formula. If I just replace this here, we're in good shape, okay? So now I've got my, it's rounded, but I've got my 14%, um, and that is truly what 11 divided by 76 represents. So you might say, why should I care about that? Like, couldn't I just do something like, couldn't I pre-calculated this somehow in Excel? What's the beauty of doing this in Tableau? The beauty of doing this in Tableau is that, okay, right now I'm looking at my data at a receipt ID level, but what if I wanna switch the level of detail in the view? What if I say, oh, actually, I wanna see a breakdown of discount percentages that I got 
um, by different types of item names. Oh, well, that's a little different, right? I can see French loaf was 50% off, but canned black beans was 0%. Or, let me go ahead and set this back to a live connection because I've added a column. What if I want to see the breakdown by item type? So writing these calculations in Tableau is going to give you, um, it's going to give you a lot of flexibility to be able to change the level of detail in the view. So this is right along the lines with, you know, when you're calculating a ratio, if you're calculating a percentage, you know, aggregations are very likely going to help you because now it, the calculation is occurring at the level of the dimension in the view, whatever that happens to be, as opposed to a row level first. Okay. So then one kind of final example for time period comparison. So let's say I want to know, did I spend more at the grocery store in my November outing or in my October outing? Okay. So I'm going to write a couple quick calculations here. So I'll just call this, uh, you know, November, November sales. I'm going to do this in three parts. Okay. So I'll just say if the month of my date equals 11, then uh, well, that's not sales, I guess. I guess it's a, uh, I guess I need my final price, which right now is messed up. Let me convert that to a dimension. Okay, that's being, sorry, I'm gonna convert to a measure. Um, that's being nice to me right now. Okay, so then <laughs> there's my final price uh, for, I call it November spend. I don't know why I said sales. I'm just in superstore mode, I guess. Uh, let me duplicate November spend. I'm going to edit this calculation and let's flip this to be October spend. So now I'm just going to say if the month is equal to 10, then final price. Okay, so I did not aggregate those, right? So I just wrote, um, you know, just the if statement. If month is this, then price end. So if I view my underlying data, I want to show you what that preview looks like. All right, where are those new fields? There they are. Okay, so for my November spend, any orders from September or October are null, and then there's some values for just November, and then here's some values for just October. So I need to aggregate these before I take my November spend minus my October spend, because if I try and do it at a row level, what's November minus October? What's null minus three? Tableau does not like that. Any null value you know, minus another value is just gonna be null because null is just basically an unknown placeholder in Tableau's mind. So I'll call this like November versus October spend differential. Oh, why did I not put a formula in there? Let me edit that. So I take, if I'm gonna do this without aggregations. So I take November minus October, I say, okay. So again, now Tableau is trying to do a row level calculation and I just get a nice old blank in my worksheet. So let's edit that. And instead, we're gonna take the sum of our November spend and I'm gonna subtract the sum of my October spend. And I'm gonna say, okay, error, no worries. Let's bring this bad boy back out here. And we can see that there was a whole 50 cent differential. So how dare you inflation creeping up on us, costing us an extra half dollar here. What is going on? Uh, Cool. So that's a bit of a rundown on why aggregations are important in calculations. Um, so I hope seeing some of those use cases uh, was valuable. We'll be uploading these materials. So in the link below, um, you can access the data source and you can access this workbook if you want to dig into it. And then if, if you have questions, you know, regarding your own data, um, feel free to let us know. And we're happy to be able to help you work through how this would apply to your use case as much as we can. So thank you so much for tuning in and, and checking out this week's video. And we look forward to putting out another video and seeing you here again next week. Thanks.